conceptions about nutrition and uh, even when you join as a student you might think uh, nutrition is all about eating but it is just not about eating but it's about learning to live and live in a healthy manner so this is uh, just the beginning to my talk and uh, this is about uh, what kind of career are you looking at when you take up the subject of nutrition uh nutrition might seem uh, at the first glance that you know uh, people think that oh dietitian when i have to go to her she is going to tell me what to eat what not to eat more than eating she will tell me what not to eat but it is not as simple as that and uh, as those who are studying uh, they you also know uh, that you know what are the various type of courses that you undertake when studying nutrition so it is much more complex and uh, multifaceted than first meets the eye now in layman's terms uh, nutrition jobs it means that uh, uh, people who are in the field of dietetics and uh, nutrition do more than uh, pushing of fruits and vegetables because everybody is scared everybody thinks you know when they get forwards on whatsapp or even on uh, read on internet or the as we say google doctor they just talk about they touch the subject of uh, nutrition superficially and uh, they think this is all it is to it but it is much more than that and uh, basic degree that you have to do is minimum for 3 years of study uh, so it is the nutritionist understanding of the relationship between diet health disease which allows them to teach and counsel people on how to select their food how to prepare the food and how to maintain good eating habits so uh, <clears throat> a career in nutrition as you all know will allow you to serve as a credible uh, uh, nutrition expert a guru you can say in fact guru of food health and nutrition who creatively applies all the science based principles to food and nutrition so two things which uh, terms which are very very common which people always like to know about that who is a nutritionist and who is a dietitian how does it change so <clears throat> uh, let us just go forward and see this uh, while nutritionist and dietitians are quite similar in uh, many ways there are few differences between these two professions one in india if you are a want to be a nutritionist uh, you don't have to undergo any certification or licensing but to become a dietitian and to practice as a dietitian you must uh, appear for a registered dietitian exam and uh, uh, take get that rd behind your name no there are certain common tasks of uh, a nutritionist or a dietitian it's nothing but scientific study of nutrition and food science provide guidance on eating habits and nutrition to people both of them do, do that uh, plan diets according to the needs of the patient or the client conduct or take part in research activity now as you can see all these are very very important tasks a, a nutritionist or a dietitian performs now though nutritionist and dietitian share many common tasks the rd or the dietitian is more uh, like an allied healthcare professional who works in a healthcare setup totally and mostly they are seen working in hospitals and clinics monitoring patients preparing uh, their diets for them and uh, helping them to get used to the diet which is very uh, the diet which you know it helps them to lead uh, a healthy life and overcome or uh, uh, you know overcome whatever kind of uh, issue health issue they are facing now rds they work in tandem with doctors they observe the doctor's diagnosis these are the task of a dietitian mind you you can pay attention all of you and inputs and prepare diet plans for patients based on those observation and inputs now imagine when a dietitian is working in consultation with a doctor so it is not simple study of just food but a lot of uh, physiology physiology is involved uh, 
the, what we call the metabolic pathways, met metabolic processes that are involved in the body. They have to learn about them, the biochemistry, nutritional biochemistry they learn and so many things put together only then a dietitian will have sufficient knowledge and confidence and also to a large extent even the pharmaceuticals. So the kind of medicines, how the uh, nutrients and uh, drugs, they have an interaction. So a dietitian is a one who has a complete picture of all these factors and aspects. Now, other than healthcare centers, uh, they can also be seen working in uh, fitness centers, uh, sports centers. And uh, I'm just going to give the details as we go along. <clears throat> but let me just uh, tell you what are the courses uh, in nutrition and dietetics, uh, because that is what here most of you want to learn about. Uh, we have a PG diploma, uh, sorry, a diploma or a PG diploma then undergraduate courses, then postgraduate courses. Postgraduate courses include masters in science as well as a, a PhD. And uh, certificate courses are also available. Now, these certificate courses, uh, 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 certain people can do. It doesn't make you a nutrition expert. and doesn't give you the permission to practice nutrition. But a certificate course only helps you to gain knowledge in the subject and definitely with that certificate course uh, you need to have another graduate course in nutrition only then you become a uh, qualified uh, nutritionist so an undergraduate three years course is compulsory for everyone so uh, but if you are doing some certificate courses there are certain private institutes which offer they are only for gaining knowledge uh, not for practice now uh, courses offered. Uh, they are offered by regular universities, uh, private and government colleges. Uh, in the Twin Cities right now, uh, there are about 25 to 30 uh, private and under, uh, government colleges in the uh, city of Hyderabad and Sikandrabad, which are offering uh, BSc and different types of uh, BSc's they are offering. And uh, those are the regular uh, offline mode then we have the uh, distance learning mode uh, the premier institute of the universities igloo as well as there are private universities uh, like madurai kamraj or many other universities which offer uh, online uh, distance mode uh, courses and private institutes offering online and offline like there are certain institutes which uh, I don't want to name them but they do offer these uh, nowadays because the subject of nutrition is of such value because of the situation of <clears throat> health awareness which is there in the public so many uh, it has been taken up by a lot of private institutions which both offer online and offline courses uh, but if you want to choose any private institute uh, courses, uh, you have to see their validity and how well uh, in the sense, what is the accreditation they have and whether the certificate that you're going to receive from them or a degree or a diploma that you're going to be taking from them, is it valid? Has anybody uh, given a certificate like any uh, other authority has uh, given uh, importance and they say yes this course which is being offered by this institute is valid so the validity of the course you must check before uh, you take up that course i'm only giving you an idea about that they are being done by certain private institutes then there is a full-time diploma and certificate courses so all this if it is being offered in private mode then you need to be certain of where you are spending your effort, your energy and your money and from where you are gaining knowledge and who are the people who are teaching you. Now diploma courses, we have a list of them as you can see, I am not going to read out all of them. But there are different kind of diplomas which are available in the <coughs> uh, world today, especially in our country I am talking about and if you go abroad there are many more. So, but what I'm talking right now is uh, uh, limited to the country. 
and these are mostly one to two years long. Some institutes uh, associated with certain hospitals, Loma, which is two years long. So they range from one year diploma to two years. And uh, depending upon the institute, the course duration varies. Some institutes are known to offer distance education format and uh, course duration may differ. Now, what is the eligibility for diploma 10 plus 2 from a recognized board? Admission is depending upon the institute. It can be direct or uh, merit-based. Uh, valid diploma certificate holders may pursue a bachelor's degree or a BSc of any combination of nutrition can be taken up or PG diploma course. Now, bachelor's degree courses, these are the ones which are being offered uh, in our country in clinical nutrition, nutrition dietetics, food science nutrition, etc. So you have a wide range. Why am I showing you all this in detail is you have, according to your interest in the subject of food and nutrition, you can choose an area where you want to start uh, or start uh, in your specialization. Otherwise, very simple, you have food, uh, food, uh, food and nutrition or applied nutrition. Then course, of course, a valid bachelor's degree course is for three years. Eligibility, 10 to 2, admission process, a process either merit uh, based or direct admission. And depending on the, what are the marks which you are scored by you in the uh, relevant board examination. Then uh, further education, after doing the Bachelor of Science graduate, they may go for PG degree or a PG diploma course. So remember here, after you finish your BSc, you have two options. Either you can take a short term, uh, that is one year postgraduate diploma, and or you can take up two years of master's program. Uh, this one year of uh, PG diploma program is offered uh, even in Telangana and even in Hyderabad as uh, uh, Janki, Dr. Janki read out, uh, we also offer in our college. Now the relevance of this uh, PG diploma, it is your choice. Why do you want to take it? But one very relevant information I would like to share that uh, when the students, after they do their three-year degree, want to go abroad and pursue their master's, uh, their uh, the three-year degree program is not uh, valid. They, they, you should have a four-year uh, undergraduate program as uh, eligibility for admission into masters. So therefore, if you do your three-year BSc course and one year of PG diploma in nutrition uh, or clinical nutrition, then uh, you would have completed your four years of study when you, uh, uh, abro uh, you know, apply abroad for your master's program. So for any reason, you might like to go and pursue your master's there. It may be due to immigration or it may be due to your personal choice or any other reason. Therefore, this is the information I wanted to tell you. Now, coming to postgraduate courses and for education, uh, we have MSc and diploma courses. Uh, we, we have MSc in all these fields uh, from simple food and nutrition to food science, sports nutrition, dietetics, then uh, pediatric nutrition, clinical nutrition. Now, all these courses are available in India being offered by various institutions and universities. Now, <clears throat> some of the well-known PG diploma courses available in India are in the area of therapeutic nutrition, sports science and nutrition, food science, etc., and food science and quality control. Now, duration of master's program, as you all know, two years, PG diploma, one year. Eligibility criteria uh, must possess relevant bachelor's degree in the field of nutrition from a recognized institute. Now, why I'm saying a relevant subject of nutrition is many students I have seen over the past uh, three decades, uh, they do their BSc in any other subject, be it a combination of zoology, chemistry, botany, that is BZC, or in microbiology, or it can be in genetics. And after they complete that three-year course, they come and ask us, ma'am, do I, am I eligible to study masters in the subject of nutrition, clinical nutrition, etc.? then we, will, we refuse because we say you haven't done your three-year fundamental course in or degree course in nutrition. 
Therefore, remember here, if you want to do your master's program in the field of food and nutrition or clinical nutrition and dietetics, you must have or possess a three-year graduate course, again, in the subject of nutrition. Then only uh, uh, you become eligible for that. And it is mostly admission is based sometimes on entrance, uh, like in Telangana, PG set conducted by OU, or uh, many other colleges in across India, it can be merit-based also, merit-based or a test given by that particular university or college and followed by a, a per, you know group discussion or a personal interview. Now, minimum uh, requirement to even apply for that PG set is between 50 to 55%. Now, after master's or PG diploma course, you may go further advanced programs like MPhil and PhD. Nowadays, MPhil less and less preferred because uh, the amount of effort and energy and the knowledge that you gain from PhD is uh, much more relevant in the field and PhD qualifies you for further career in a, a very relevant manner. Therefore, PhD is what preferred. Now, what is the role of a dietitian in healthcare? <clears throat> the role of dietitian has come a long way since 1900s because uh, still it is a uh, unknown to a lot of people. Some think that as uh, dietitians, the name implies only give out diets to make people lose weight. That is the most common misconception a common people has, uh, you know, without having any knowledge about the background of nutrition career. So they think a dietitian, oh, she's going to tell, uh, she's only qualified to tell people to lose weight. Whereas this is a very, very small part of their, you know, job. The profession promotes better health by spreading uh, awareness about diet, nutrition, and they talk about the relationship between good eating habits and preventing or managing specific diseases. I'm going to be, uh, you know, uh, going a little bit here uh, in detail that it is not just sitting and planning diets and handing it over to people and managing weight loss, even though right now the weight loss, uh, a lot of people do need weight loss. And a dietitian is definitely qualified enough to give out a weight loss diet. But it is her job is much more than that. She spreads awareness about the uh, diet, the relationship between good heating habits and how to prevent a disease. And <clears throat> it requires proper documentation of the patient's progress. And as I said, a knowledge in biochemistry, in food safety, a knowledge in uh, uh, medicine and diet interactions, etc. The career after pursuing a degree in nutrition and dietetics is quite prolific. You have a lot of choice as to what you want to do because more and more people are becoming uh, conscious of their fitness and health day by day. Now, you get jobs both in the government sector and private sector. So for government sector, I'm just going to uh, give examples like government hospitals uh, in the city, whatever hospitals we have, you know, the most famous right now in the picture is Gandhi Hospital, uh, Gandhi, Usmania, they all have government dietitians, then community health centers, uh, government uh, schemes and missions like ICDS and uh, NHRM, then uh, Department of Women and Child Welfare, ICMR, the more and more public is knowing about ICMR because whatever nutrition that we are going to talk about, any recommendation, daily recommendations for common man comes from ICMR. And of course, government R&D units like National Institute of Nutrition, CFTRI, then uh, government education institutions like schools and of course, government colleges. Now, in private sector, there are a lot more, lot more avenues open to you uh, in mostly talking about the corporate hospitals as part of the dietary department team, the dietitians work and take care of the dietary needs of the inpatients and outpatients. So inpatients, they plan the diet, they follow up the patient for as long as the patient is in the hospital and outpatients, of course, counseling and again, follow up. Then private clinics, nursing homes, 
now sports and health clubs is gaining a lot of importance currently everywhere so because you know very well that uh, the uh, more and more people are becoming uh, aware of the importance of sports for their children so a lot of sports academies are coming up and uh, they need uh, when the child is playing a specific sport uh, the type of diet that has to be given to that child for their proper development in that or uh, progress in that game has to be controlled by a dietitian so a lot of um, importance is there in the sports field then of course uh, hostels and athlete camps schools and many many private schools all these private schools will charge a bomb as fees they do have nutrition counselors and uh, nutrition experts to plan for their uh, menus which they uh, uh, prepare and serve to the children as well as children childhood obesity is becoming uh, too common and uh, definitely it is on the rise so many schools are employing uh, dietitians and nutritionists employment opportunities are also open in catering departments of star hotels and restaurants uh, sometimes uh, you will see some hotel or uh, some restaurants specialty restaurants talking about where they are going to mention the nutritional value of the uh, uh, menu so such kind of specialty restaurants and then uh, gyms wellness and fitness centers of course uh, client consulting guiding and planning diets for clients then a consultant practitioner yes now this is the one uh, particular area which is becoming very very popular in the current times now uh, here uh, experienced dietitians may become assistant associate only after gaining certain amount of uh, definitely experience uh, and uh, some of these uh, dietitians all over india also you will see them uh, specializing in particular niche area like pediatric dietetics sports nutritionist as i told you already then a uh, diabetes consultant and weight loss experts so once you become specialized and once you gain experience in your field working in hospitals etc then you Uh, gain so much of experience that you can diversify as a specialist dietitian. Uh, then, of course, my old profession and uh, myself teaching research and development. So, research and development, as you know, uh, is a continuous process, and especially in the subject of uh, nutrition, because whatever we practice or whatever we teach to our students. comes with the knowledge of uh, not what has been taught 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago but what is the current knowledge in this field now where do we get that current uh, current knowledge from from the people who are phd's uh, and who are working in uh, research organizations as well as uh, even in hospitals of course there is so much of chance of doing research because of the kind of patients and the number of patients and from all this experience that we gain when the papers are published and information is out there then we uh, get that information the current trends and implement it in our day to day teaching so teaching is a wonderful profession even though i am saying so but uh, many of you might prefer to go in this area of teaching and of course uh, research and development you should have an orientation towards that uh, exclusively you can do research and development or you can teach and do research and development or you can be a dietitian and do research and development and for all this you need to have msc ph mphil and phd will be of great use now other avenues Uh, in other revenues is what i talk uh, i'm going to talk about is what is most popular currently and that is self employment now self employment is an excellent opportunity available in front of nutritionists and dietitians currently now here when you want to become a self employed it is always better for you to obtain a registered dietitians um uh what we call uh, additional qualification and get a valid a validity from ida pass that exam because it needs a lot of rigorous preparation and 
when there are two dietitians, one who's an RD and one who's not an RD, then there, it makes a lot of difference uh, in what kind of clients you're going to get and what kind of client base you're going to build up. So if you have decent financial resources and entrepreneurship skills, uh, starting your own private clinic, both online and offline. Online is becoming more and more popular because of urbanization, people, uh, and also the kind of jobs that they are doing. They may not have enough time to travel a long way to sit in front of a dietitian. But now how I am reaching out to hundreds of my students like that, each dietitian, person to person, will be able to give consultation. So online consultations are becoming very popular and that way you don't really need to have a lot of investment but you need to have a lot of knowledge base good knowledge base and how to establish the uh, entire practice so that is why i said entrepreneurship skills then uh, consultancy of course going to three or four hospital as part-timers that is consultancy or if you gain enough experience and people start recognizing you in your field, you must have heard of so many. I'm not going to name the dietitians, but there are so many of them out there who are personal dietitians to famous personalities. So all this, imagine this is all in front of you. It is all there for you for taking. So you need to work hard and have a good knowledge base and a good knowledge of the fundamentals and work and gain experience in certain hospitals in taking care of the patients and then uh, get involved a little bit in research and then establish your practice. Why I'm saying this is more and more just uh, students are finishing their masters and they are going online establishing their practices. So general public uh, has to be prepared uh, to see who is a registered dietitian and who is not. And definitely a registered dietitian will get a better client base. Then uh, apart from this, of course, you have, you can establish a food business. You can have your own product, de food, uh, product development and then certain specialty foods or niche catering. There are so many existing in the Twin Cities itself because uh, as I said, I know of so many people who do niche catering, who have developed their own food labels, certain specialty foods with respect to millet preparations or, you know, uh, diabetic preparations and many other specialty. And uh, as if you have the initial investment and you have the entrepreneurship skills and that boldness, you can go out and have your own food business. And of course, if you are a PhD and you have worked in research and development and uh, having a government job. Uh, so then, of course, if you want to go and apply for WHO, UNICEF and CARE, also they hire nutritionists and dietitian. So in such a setup, you mostly take care of community nutrition activities. Now, what are the skills required? Quickly, let us go through. Uh, because I, I just want to bust the myth that a dietitian is only capable of giving a diet. No, these are the skills required which they gain uh, during their period of study. Organizational ability because the coursework which is uh, done in five years of study, three years of degree and two years of post-graduation, they have to do much more. They have to go out into the community plan the programs, they have to do nutrition awareness programs, they have to organize events and they have to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, make healthy recipes and sell it to uh, a group of people and, or, and low cost recipes they plan. So all this is, uh, wh why do they do that? It is only because to develop these skills which are required further in their profession like organizational abilities, teamwork, aptitude for a subject of science, a keen interest in health and diet, unless and until you are interested. Don't go by when your parents say go for nutrition. No, I feel and with my 33 years of experience and further what I've studied, uh, many a times uh, I'll tell you when I was studying, doing my undergraduation, that course was not nutrition and dietetics it was home science oh so people would say what you're doing home science what is it all about 
it is all about cooking so it see i am here right now it it is not all about cooking so similar way when you are studying 3 years of degree course in nutrition it is unless and until you are interested and i was interested so now this subject is become my passion so unless you are interested my advice sincerely please don't take up because there is lots which you are going to learn and understanding of people from varied backgrounds whether from uh, socio economically uh, uh, you know different categories we have so people come to you so when you are planning or talking to them about their daily diet you need to have an understanding about their food habits what they can afford what they cannot afford then uh, entrepreneurship skills then good communication skills are very very important and you must be multilingual not just english and hindi but you also must know the local language wherever you're going to uh, practice as a dietitian learn that local language comes in really very very helpful because a large number of clients or patients come from that uh, language uh, background then um, as in the case of uh, every medical profession given that nutritionists dietitians work very closely with patients it is important that a dietitian be compassionate be patient be motivational sensitive to the individual patient needs individual not just a patient a nutritionist is the one who goes out into the community who conducts awareness programs like we do and who tells people what is Uh, the kind of uh, food which will help them to remain healthy therefore you need to be compassionate you need to be sensitive to people's needs uh, so a dietitian or a nutritionist will be planning food and nutrition programs as i said supervising meal preparation in schools and hospitals uh, recommending uh, dietary modifications educating patients on diets that may help their condition working with other healthcare professionals like doctors and nurses and if they are working in the community you also need to go to the villages and work with the uh, head of the village or the panchayat and uh, many other local people informing the severity of illness and complication of uh, uh, treatments benefits everything to the patient and uh, uh, active in patient care as dietitian reporting on the nutritional status so these are some of the things some i'm not saying it is a complete picture that is giving you only when you become a qualified nutritionist or a dietitian and start working in the field you will discover many more roles that you're going to play and many more hats that you're going to wear now all of you must be talking ma'am is talking so about the glorious future of a nutritionist and dietitian uh, what should be the what is going to be the salary see just don't go by the salary as i said go by the passion for the subject so starting salary depends on lot of factors like what are your qualifications your job experience your job profile and uh, your job location and what kind of employer you're going to work with only after gaining work experience now the younger generation nowadays expects a starting salary to be very huge but my dear the subject that you are studying you need experience unless and until you have experience your profession will not value you so therefore your starting salary may be as low as 10000 to 25 depends again on your qualification whether you are a masters or a phd and then who is your employer uh salary in the top positions varies starting from 25000 to 90000 or 1 lakh depending on qualification positions held experience gained etc and the location now independent consultancy and business initially it may be less till you are completely established uh, but once you start uh, getting good number of clients and you have a good reputation and your uh, whatever advice that you're giving to people seems to be working for them then only you can start expecting good earnings now coming to as i talking so much about registered dietitian how to be a registered dietitian in india 
So after you complete your BIC in home science, food and nutrition or any area of uh, nutrition or an MSc or BSc plus postgraduate diploma, then uh, you have to get, uh, you know, apply to IDA and do six months of internship in any hospital which is recognized by IDA, Indian Dietetic Association. This is the chief body in our country which is responsible for conducting and giving you a valid registered dietitian qualification. So IDA, Indian Dietetic Association, it recognizes certain hospitals where uh, they fulfill those conditions and only there you can do your six months of internship or two years of work experience. Certain rules keep changing. So you can visit the IDA website uh, and look for a registered dietitian, how to apply, how to go about it. And then you will gain the current, current rules and regulations which are in practice. Then after satisfying the educational qualifications and internship, uh, you can appear for the RD exam held by IDA and clear it. After clearing the exam, you may be uh, called as a registered dietitian because you will be given a certificate by IDA. Now, what are the upcoming areas in the subject uh, that we are talking about? As I already said, sports nutrition. Then we have a subject called nutrigenomics where the uh, metabolism of the body and the genes that we possess uh, have a direct relationship to the kind of diseases that we get and how by and these uh, diseases and these genes interact with nutrition therefore uh, a subject of nutrigenomics is an upcoming then of course we have our traditional medicine ayurveda and uh, definitely there is an interlinking between ayurveda uh, and nutrition so this field is also upcoming and currently what situation we are facing such a huge pandemic pandemic was a word or a definition which i used to teach in my to my students whenever i would talk about the epidemiology uh, of infectious diseases so when this we are seeing it for the first time and all of you are also facing it therefore and this is all you know you are getting so many forwards so many prints in the print media and on the social platform about immunity how to boost your immunity with nutrition therefore not just immunity but overall if how to maintain your health so public health and community nutrition is also going to be a very very upcoming and relevant topic in the future now further information for all of you what are the universities which offer what are the institutes which offer what course pg diploma diploma and uh, msc and phd you can uh, go to these uh, some of the sites and you will get comprehensive information i have just collected uh, some of them there may be many more but i am just giving what i find them to be very relevant now uh, study abroad if uh, some of you want to go abroad master's programs are offered and also phd uh, of course tofel ielts and uh, gre is mandatory and you need to fulfill four years of ug requirement uh, and otherwise if you go with a bsc degree you will have to do an additional year of study then scholarships are also uh, given by different universities and uh, you have to start preparing and doing the survey etc in your final year itself if you want to go abroad for your postgraduate studies several universities offer online courses to abroad universities and even currently if you are already a student of nutrition and you want to take up and add some other skill set and some certificates and gain more knowledge you can uh, there are a lot of very good universities which are offering uh, of online courses certificate courses and very very reputed i have come across so please do some survey and you do not waste my, your time take my advice and you start doing certain courses uh, i'm just going to end uh, my um, address to all of you uh, by a very very relevant quote of thomas edison which says that the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs 
but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. And uh, with my experience, uh, I do have faith that this day is going to, uh, already we are seeing it is in progress and all those who would like to make a career in the field of nutrition and dietetics, we definitely have a very bright and healthy future. Thank you so much, all of you for listening. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a wonderful.